folks welcome back to the jerome b farm and homestead man it is a beautiful day mid-november uh, it's uh, supposed to get up to 70 today and uh, there's no wind at all and uh, it's really humid though uh, there's a cool front coming in from the north so tomorrow is supposed to be cold and blowing and rainy uh, coming out of the north so uh, today what we're going to do before that nasty weather hits is uh, last thing we need to do uh, going into winter on our beehives so I have problems with skunk attacks on my hives the skunks will go up and they'll scratch on the entrance a bee will come out and a skunk will uh, take the bee grab it eat it chew it up and they chew up a bunch of bees and keep them in their mouth till they get like a plug it looks like kind of like chewing tobacco and after they get all the juice out of all the bees sucking on them they'll spit it out and uh, you'll find in front of the hives what i call skunk plugs and they're about inch and a half long and it's just a little wad of bees and uh, I, I had a nuke a couple years ago i had almost got it through winter and a skunk got after it and killed it out they they didn't have enough uh, bees in there to, to stay warm and keep the queen warm so i've got this uh electric net or electric fence it's a uh, it's not metal it's it's like polyester and it has uh metal uh interwoven in there conductors so if anything touches it uh, they'll get shocked so uh i think if you it's uh, made by premier one and if you google premier one beehive fence you'll find this but they make all kinds of fence i also have it on my chickens uh, it's a little taller this is only uh I don't, it's like two and a half feet. I don't remember how many inches exactly. Uh, but anyway, it's, it's the fence that's made to protect your hives from uh, critters that are, you know, not big and not going to jump over stuff. So I doubt if it would work for a bear, but we don't have bears around here. So anyway, uh, last year I made a perimeter around my hives with the fence. But uh, this year I got to thinking... I don't need to fence it off, I just need to cover the front entrance. So I'm just gonna make a string that just loops around uh, all of my hives and just goes in the front. And uh, we're gonna try that this year. So uh, with that, let's get started. It's got, uh, it's got little posts built into it and you just push them in the ground. And uh, you'll see how it works, it's pretty slick and it's uh, fast and easy. Let's get started. So I've got uh, three sections of this. One's pretty long and, and two shorter ones. If I can get it apart. So here's one of the shorter sections. I also have these little uh, short posts that you can put in between. If you got a place that's sagging, you can kind of put that underneath it and raise it up. And these are uh, non-conductive. Okay, I'm gonna start, I think, with this long one here. Trick is to find the end now. <laughs> there we go. There's one little white stake with a white tip on it right there, so I'm assuming that's the end. Yeah, so I was planning on doing this without my bee suit, but as soon as I got started, one got after me. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, suit up and get the veil on. Because uh, they usually go for your face, and I don't mind getting stung, but I don't like getting stung in the face. That's the worst. <laughs> and man, I heated up pretty fast. I'm warm. So here's the end with the white post. So here's how these work. You just got a little spike on the end and you just push it in the ground. It helps if it's rained, you know, recently. I don't know how it's gonna work with that cement post there. I may have to move that a little bit. Or not post, uh, cement block. So I'm just gonna put it where uh, anything that gets up here is gonna have to touch this fence and likely get shocked. I'm gonna have to move this around. I think this section here is 150 foot. So 
I'll just kind of rough it in where I want it, and then I'll fine tune it here in a little bit. Okay, that side over there is kind of roughed in. And here's the, my fence controller here. So uh, we'll bring that on down here, hook it up, and then run it in the back of these uh, hives right here. I just set my 12 volt battery here. Here's my ground stake. worked out just right got this wire here on the end to connect it to the controller I am missing a knob off of this can you believe that <laughs> I bet a pack rat got that knob I had a pack rat nest in that old barn and uh, I was cleaning it out. I found tools and <laughs> all kinds of things in there. I was like, well, that's where that went. So how they got it off of there, I don't know. It's a red knob. I guess I'll just uh, wrap it around it. Bees are pretty active today. Nice and warm out. Nothing for them to forage on though. They might find a little bit of pollen here and there. Okay, so doesn't seem to uh, bother the bees at all that it's there in front of them. They just go right around it. So now I'm going to get the little black stakes and uh, fix the corners and things, get it tightened up. Okay, I'm going to put some of these posts in. So uh, I don't want this touching this cement block right here. I'm afraid it might ground it out. So I'm going to go ahead and put one here. Give me a little slack here. And I'll put another one right here on the side to kind of protect it. Like that. So they come with a little pigtail on them. So they connect like that.
Okay, so I'll do it this way. I didn't even need that third strand of fence. As you can see uh, how we got it here. I'm hoping that's not too much space right there. So if it is, uh, we'll have to do something different. Until we got the corner fixed. So you want the, you don't want the post or the fence part touching anything that's going to ground it out. I don't know if those concrete blocks would ground it out or not, but uh, I pulled them up off of there. Goes along here. Could probably get that a little closer. there there that should protect that little nink there a lot better okay so that's how we do this uh, before someone comments and says well why don't you raise your hives up and you won't have a skunk problem well, that may be true, but uh, I'm six foot two and see how high these hives are on me right now. So if I add two uh, seven inch, basically honey supers, it's gonna be right here on me. And that's too high to be lifting that much weight uh, in the summertime when you're trying to jockey things around. I don't like messing with all that. So, uh, and that's without raising them. So it'd be about right here on me with, without raising them. If I raise it anymore, It'd be, it'd be up here and that's no good. So that's why I don't raise my hives. They're already pretty high up. I'd say the bottom on that is about, uh, about 12 inches high already uh, to the bottom of the baseboard. But uh, anyway, uh, this keeps the skunks off. It's easy and it's quick. Just gotta get my battery down here and see if I can find that red knob. Uh, I could probably just wrap that wire around there and make it work fine. but. Uh, Anyway, uh, so hey, be sure and subscribe to the channel. Uh, this is probably the last beekeeping thing I'll do uh, this fall. Uh, I'm probably going to put some insulation on these uh, two nukes and try and help them out a little bit. And uh, But other than that, you know, this is pretty much it until uh, next spring. So give me a thumbs up if you would, and don't forget to subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next beekeeping video. Y'all take care. Thank you.